Hello, hello, everybody. It has been forever because Brain decided to go and just have a fun old trip, as it were. So I vanished for a few weeks because emotions be evil and I just fell into a, like a, a bog of funk. And then it was just now that my brain was just like, okay, come on, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta like force it. We gotta like force it. We wanna do things. Well, obviously, brain isn't just gonna let it passively happen. We're gonna have to put a best foot forward. And now we're back. We're gonna continue with the weird French maid case where a guy was poisoned. And there was like totally an evil Phoenix Wright, except everybody says, oh, there was nobody there. And then we met Evil Phoenix Wright, and he was like an Oni. I'm just, just like, how the hell did anyone ever mistake him for Phoenix Wright? He's probably taller, and he's literally bright red. It's insane. But yeah, just a, a quick recap of what happened. Miss Beard, who we defended in the tutorial case of the second game was working as a maid at a failing French restaurant, which is terrible because the guy isn't even a chef. He's like a Ponzi scheme, like, essential oil salesman who also, like, pickpockets small things off of people. When someday, a weird guy came in with a frickin' scouter and was, like, sitting at the table, apparently listening to the lottery winnings. He had a bunch of lottery tickets. And one, like, had a ticket that was worth, like, $500,000. Was doodling about MC Bomb, or MC Bomber, or something like that. It had, like, Mask to Mask written in there, and I don't know if that's important or if that's just, like, a haha -ha Easter egg. There, like, MC Bomber was written underneath 500,000, whereas there was a crossed out 100,000, which has, feels like it's important. Also, the French, fake French guy, I think he, he oh, there's no way he's actually French, just no, is also in debt for $500,000. There's a pervy guy who goes to the, to the French restaurant, hates the $8 coffee, just to ogle the maids, of which there was only one. It's a very confusing case right now, because it's just like, it, it almost doesn't help that we know who did it. Then again, hilariously, if they didn't show the... Like, first off, if they didn't show the flashback where there was the obvious evil Phoenix Wright sitting in shadow for you to automatically go, well, there's the evil Phoenix Wright. He has to be it. And then if we didn't know that they're like, well, then again, we'd have to know. We'd have to know that somebody was pretending to be Phoenix Wright. And then this guy with spiky hair shows up and he's a big jerk with a weird broken down moped. And then he says that he, he claims to be Phoenix Wright. Like, we know who did it, but we just need to, like, figure out how to explain it to the court. It's, it's a mad world out here. We're gonna jump into the trial. <laughs> the crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him. But we figured out who he was pretty quick and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Except, I forget. I think we all didn't... Hmm. I forget when, what's his name, Coffee Guy, kind of got Uno reverse card gotcha at us. Because we know that there was another lottery ticket missing. And it was the one stolen by the chef. But it was for one dollar. Because he's a fool. Because he's an idiot. A morang. But let's see. Hmm. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. 
Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, trite. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one, so let the fun begin. I don't know if there are any gimmicks to this case or not. Could always be, you never know, the world's a mad place. Who is this old man? Scary old man, Detective Gumshoe? There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Ah, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at them and seeds. Hmm, seeds. Ah, it was nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. You were there? I guess not even the mighty Godot can avoid being attacked by that guy. The old man was the only other customer in the place at the time. He took his time finding a payphone, apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. Interesting. Do we have his autopsy? We do. Died between 1.30 and 2.30? That's almost a full hour that it took him to report it. Well, it depends. Time of death was between, but still, that's a wide range. I also need to look over the evidence again. There's the obvious thing of, like, yeah, article that incited this whole thing. Apparently, dude faked being us. The sports paper, MC Bomber, $100,000, an actual bomb, doodle, cartoon bomb, crossed out 500000 and then mass to mask, ha 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 ha. The job listings, which I don't know if that'll be important. Maybe we've gotten all the use out of it. A part of me wonders if that would be a nice mechanic if... We're, well, then again, I think it happens sometimes where if an, a piece of evidence is obviously no longer needed, like it was obviously just a single-use thing, nine times out of ten it gets thrown away. And I think this was mostly used to corner the Frenchman to be like, ah, your restaurant is failing because you need to advertise... There's the bad meal, the loan contract for the Frenchman, the broken scooter, autopsy report, floor plan, crime photo. And this is meant to just set up that if somebody was sitting with him, by the time the cook came out to see what was happening, that they would obviously be visible. You could argue that they could hide a little bit more to the left, but this is all about point of view. And considering that the Frenchman stole a $1 winning lottery ticket, he obviously went further out. So yeah, that's just to show that from the kitchen, that's what you see. Coffee cup, po uh, covered in victim Maggie's fingerprints, has traces of the poison... The winning lottery ticket. Apron with apparently ketchup and coffee. And then the cyanide poison in a bottle. Well, let's press. How long is the defendant unconscious for? The officers got to the crime scene around 2.40. Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at the time. It took another 10 minutes or so for sh uh, before she came to. I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search, too. Ha! <laughs> I would have loved to see Maggie asleep like that, all oh, pretty and peaceful. You're a professional, Detective Gumshoe, not a professional bird watcher. Save the romantics for your own time, Detective. All we need to know is about the investigation. Oops, I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? The victim didn't have any identification on him. He didn't have any? Are you saying that it was stolen then? No, I don't think so. The victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. Then how'd he pay for his meal? All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. 
58 cents? Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me, pal. The victim sounds like he was a fairly miserable young man. Or some kind of outlaw. Why not give him a bit of an edge? I think I'm onto something here. Yeah, I think there, I should probably present the $20 lunch just to be like, if he had that little money on him, why would he go to a place like this? Why not go anywhere else? Well, he figured out who he was pretty quick. How'd you do that? Wait a sec. Huh? D did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Yeah, basically. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. He's so let down, he's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes going on. There was a prescription bag on the victim's table along with the lottery ticket. It seems Mr. Glen Elg visited his doctor before he went to Tresby Inn. We got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Should I leave this alone or ask to hear more? We can always double back and ask about the other thing. Well, let's ask about the prescription bag. So what sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. It was completely empty? So that seems to be the right answer for that. Victim got this from the uh, doctor before he went. And the bag is empty. Ha! Huh. You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? Desperate, are you, trite? Now, what happened with the investigation after the de that, detective? We'll quickly save. And double ask about that, just because you never know! Like, yeah, it added a form of evidence, but yeah, she mad. These, I'm not going to make the mistake of being like, I think I asked the right idea thing. Oh, nope. Apparently I got the right one and it just went on ahead. When Maggie was searched, we found a lorry ticket and bottle of poison. But the defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? In that case, isn't it possible someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? Hey, yeah! You've nailed it, pal! Hmm. It happens to me all the time. We had a department party the other day, and when I got home, I was searching the boss's shoe. I was wearing the boss's shoes. Keep up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. Sorry. So, trite, someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket, and that's a pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with some evidence? Um, well, I'd love to if I had any. It appears you have no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Wright. Continue with your testimony, witness. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. So the half a million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Yeah. Interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for, but wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh, yeah. The one the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? And they're just going to let him get away with it. It was just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares when it's that little. Except for Gumshoe. If I don't find a hole in this testimony, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. Gumshoe isn't working, uh, giving us anything to work with. And we can't find any contradiction if he doesn't give us something. Yeah, it's true. But Maggie and Gumshoe are like dumb and dumber. Our only hope is that they were so dumb they missed something obvious. Come on, Gumshoe, be the dumbest you've ever been. Personally, I would argue that they can't be certain that... Because that's the thing. I personally would argue, if I was Phoenix in this case, to be like, you cannot be certain that the only thing that was missing was the lottery ticket because the chef already stole a $1 ticket. So how do you know that nothing else is missing if 
another thing had already been diddly d. Hmm. That's another thing. Hmm. I don't know what to actually put Dune. Because if the uh, he only had 58 cents on him was an actual thing I could present evidence to, I would present the meal. But we have to present the evidence to the statement as it is, not what was said in the diddly D. So I'm just wondering what it to be. There, passed out. Victim didn't have any identification. Actually, shouldn't we be able to present the victim's prescription on the no identification? Because how else would he have gotten his prescription if he didn't have his identification on him? Hmm. I feel like that should be an important thing. Hmm. We'll figure out who has been smoothly. Hmm. There was nothing else missing. Actually, there has to be. But there was. Nothing else missing, but it's an empty bag. Where did his medicine go? It's not like he downed it all. So I'm going to say that we should present the, the medication bag. Because he literally went there. So yeah, I think... Yeah, Danette. How, how can you say? It's the only thing that's missing. The medication is missing. Detective Gumshoe, I think I should point out something to you. There's just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally! I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will ya? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime as well? Um, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Tresbien. Where then did the medicine disappear to? You... Are too cool, pal! Uh, indeed! Due, to, due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook the such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh, I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison, and the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Order! Order! Well, Mr. Godot, what do you have to say to that? Huh. That's all. <laughs> ha. That's all. What? Read the court of the name. Read for the court the name of the clinic of the prescription bag, will you? What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Year Otilological Clinic. Otil... Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Godot? Hardly an illness, Your Honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. Egg found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. He ruptured his eardrum? Then what on the earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. What? It's mentioned in the autopsy report if you read the fine print. They found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is, in very, very fine print. It seems Mr. Elk correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Tresbien. Therefore, it should be absurd to believe that he would have eaten his medication. But then, where is it still, then? It seems that this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. 
no. Nick, if you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right. But I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? Hmm. Because the game has gotten harder in the area of do you want to press or do you want to leave it in the past? And sometimes leaving it was the correct answer. Hmm. I'm, just, I'm still going to... I still want to push on the medication issue because where is it then? If he applied it when he was at the diddly D, shouldn't that have, like the cream like bottle been found I'm trying to think hmm I'm gonna say push I'm gonna say push I'm gonna say push cuz cuz like that's the thing is like where is the medication only moments ago mr. Godot made the following statement it seems mr. Elk correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Tres Bien if that's the case then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime but the medication in question was for topical use inside the canal. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. Objection. You know as well as I do that medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that a prescription drug would, could, would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. Ugh. I mean, <laughs> Phoenix has a point, right? That's enough. Mr. Godot, is the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call? Mr. Godot? Um, I, uh, I've got my own witness I'd like to call, sir. It's the old man who was there in the restaurant on the day of the murder. Victor Kudo? The pigeon hater? Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems little more than trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial. And that is something that bothers me. Yay! Good job, Nick. The court will adjourn for a ten-minute recess, after which we will hear the prosecution's next witness. Ah. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for recess. Because if it's a pres- Because here's the thing. Prescription medication is prescription for a reason. Sometimes because the prescribed medication is or has amounts of, like, controlled substances. It's like how, like, m like, a. Uh, certain drugs are like cousins to methamphetamine because they kind of serve similar purposes but in different ways so it's just like because it is a prescription it is a specialty thing and because it is a specialty thing and missing i feel it is important Whew, that was too close tell me about it i nearly died in there that's my line sir no it's my line I think I really did die a little bit. Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me, but he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's got to do his job, right? It's okay. I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life, but it really hurts this time. It felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy! I don't ever want to see him again! Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's going to be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Even those never-ending bird seeds. Heh! <laughs> Interesting. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Beard. Mr. Godot, your next witness, please. 
and the prosecution calls the lucky old-timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? He even brought his seeds with him. I forget what voice I gave this guy. Name an occupation if you don't mind. The name is Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty are what make me, mind you, I can be quite emotional at times. We don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? Ah, listen, young'un. How much you can you... Can you... Uh, how much car do you think there is for kimono embroidery here? Kimono embroidery? That's what I do uh, did back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, a real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Hey, maybe you could embroider my costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. So I had to take a job working the cash register at a burger joint pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Now then, witness, were you in the kitchen? No, I mean, <laughs> were, were you in the kitchen at the time of the murder? Were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh, yes, I was eating some seeds over a cup of javacino. Seeds? What do you think these are, hmm? I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps. Did I? Oh, yes, oh, yes, I did. I saw it all. Then please, tell the court we're all ears. Sure, sure. I'll tell you, I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. This will be interesting. The young man was reading the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a javakino, but she put something in it. The man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Mr. Kudo, she is not a serving girl. Please refer to her as a witness. As a witness. As a waitress. Ka, you're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words. What's wrong with the old-fashioned ones? <laughs> newfangled? All this talk of radios and glasses. It's, it's wireless and spectacles, I tell you. Excuse me? Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip away. Well, um, I think it's time to begin cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. This is a very short one, so it'll probably be multiple parts. Hmm. Well, we'll do our normal press everything. So you saw the victim, then. You saw Mr. Glen Elg. I wanted to know if Guts and Braun retained his championship or not. So he's looking at the sports paper the victim was reading, huh? And at the location in question, there are partitions between tables on the same side of the restaurant, right? So what if there are? If you say that you could see the victim, that means you were sitting at the table on the other side of the restaurant, correct? I go to the place to drink javakino. I don't go to sit. I don't remember which table I was sitting at. I mean, you go there to eye the waitress. We'll quickly press this. Mr. Kudo, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Victor Kudo never makes mistakes. I dot every T and cross every I. I see. My eyesight's fine, the doctor said. I only need spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scoping out a waitress. And I saw what the serving girl put into the javakino as well. I bet I, I know what's coming up and something tells me I'm not going to like it. Hmm. Do we want to know? Do we want to leave it? Because who knows? I'm trying to think. Because I don't think the game has done something like Rise from the Ashes where you really need to be careful in the past. And even when it did, there was a big old warning for most of the trial of like, hey, you gotta be careful, you gotta be sure. 
so I don't think pressing would be bad. But it could also mean that maybe we'll need to press on something later and then come back. Well, let's press it. Your Honor, we need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask if the witness, uh, that the witness add that, uh, what he knows about this to his testimony. Hmm, I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. D did she really put that into the coffee? You've doubt me, boy! She took some out. She took some out of a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Couldn't she have been adding sugar? Sugar in a small brown bottle like that? Like that? Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? Ah, a bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, there it is. That's the one. That's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume. So what did the accused put into that coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Ah. Uh. He took just one sip. You youngins, you waste everything. Those Java Kiddos cost eight dollars. In the good old days, we would have a drink every last drop eaten in the cup and then died. <laughs> Congratulations, you have earned the title of battiest man to grace a courtroom. So it was an immediate death. Well, potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Oh yes, he slumped over without so much as a twitch. I felt the javakino I just drank turned sour in my stomach. Oh yes, I know that feeling. And the waitress, I presume she is... That's a serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. You said I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did you have any particular features that you can identify her by? Particular features? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry? You can see all the way up to her, uh, you know, she's practically naked in that uniform. So the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit? But anyone could wear such an outfit, even me! Mr. Wright, please spare the court any further mental anguish from that image. Don't get all excited, Nick. You've got to keep yourself together. I guess I got a bit carried away. Ka! There are the things I recognize about her, too. Well, let's press. Let's see. Press the wrong button, it seems. Sure, you saw the wait a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. But what matters is whether that waitress was Maggie Beard or not. Quite right. Mr. Kudo, those, these are the features that you recognize about the defendant. I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There was a ribbon on her hair and her apron straps were loose. Do I have anything... Is there anything that would matter to that? I mean... Her apron straps were loose. There was ribbon in her hair. Well, let's press on this and see. You do seem to remember several details about her appearance. But what about the most crucial detail of all? Her face. Guys, if I wouldn't remember that. The witness noticed the straps on the accused apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right, I can even tell you the color of the ribbon in her hair. It was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. First I wanna see. There is indeed a ribbon in her hair and it's red. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Hmm. Hmm. Do we care about the straps? And why would we care about the waitress's back? Honestly, I'm interested about that because it's so out of, out of nowhere now. Like, the straps, the straps were loose. Could it be that, hmm. We can ask about them both. Let's ask about the back first, because it's so weird. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitress from the front at all? Ha! Ah, he's got you there, Gramps. <laughs> he objected just to be able to comment. People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. 
But this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. This is harassment. I tell you I'm not obsessed with straps and ribbons. I'm just telling what I saw. Mr. Kudo, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observed from the front, that is, to your testimony. Sure, sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. <laughs> yeah. And if I can't find a hole in it soon, I'll it'll get even longer, I bet. Nothing that caught your interest. Not even the stains? Let's press first. You didn't find anything to be distinct, but you did clearly see the witness's face, yes? No question about it. I didn't come this far to back down now. Victor Kudo never backs down. That's not the answer I was looking for, but okay. This has turned into a matter of pride for his old CD now, I guess. I wonder if he really did see Maggie's face or not. Like I thought, we need some concrete proof of this. Proof that that old guy didn't see the waitress clearly from the front. Do you think old CD really saw Maggie do it? Well, he probably had his eye on the waitress the whole time, that's why he was there. But he was there for the cute outfits, right? Not the waitress. I guess. She makes a good point, though. Hey, did I just say something clever? I wonder if the waitress Mr. Kudo saw really was Maggie. That's what we have to figure out, Nick. Because, yeah, I was going to say... I was going to say, when uh, looking over the... Like, the options, what she was from the back and the straps... The straps were loose, implying that the waitress, that hoe, that bitch-ass hoe with the fucking brain damage that we saw only once at the restaurant. She was just there, and she had, like, a bandage around her head. But then, why would the... But here's the thing. Maggie says that she saw... Two guys sitting there, and the one guy sprinkled something into the other guy's coffee. Kudo is saying that the guy was alone. A waitress brought in the stuff. But at the end of the day, he says, there wasn't anything that caught my interest. He would have noticed the stains. I pressed Q instead of E. Mr. Kudo, I would like you to please take a look at this. God, that filthy thing would suit feels like just you perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like just after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. Do you think I'd forget something as dirty as that? Hmm? Well, you have witted clot! <laughs> what? What is it? Ever since I said you're, uh, you have witted clot, there's been an early science in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron... This was the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Uh? And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means if you had really seen this apron before... Uh. Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. <laughs> Witness! You can't just oops your way out of this! Ha! Huh. Well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Listen, Trite. Here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. That being the defendant, Miss Maggie Beard. Exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison in the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Hmm. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you say you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect working order. I can't remember a single occasion I forgot what a burger a customer wanted. He can't remember. Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Very well. Let's test just how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. He was another one of those pesky young types, wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand, and the noisy brat kept rushing in his pages. 
The young man was listening to the wireless. I remember that well. Then the serving girl in question brought out the Javakino. The little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. The testimony we have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great deal of detail. Oh yes, I hate those you-know-what types who are so vague about everything. If we can handle this, Nick, we only need to do one thing. We just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean? Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose, but that's what I do best. <laughs> Here's another of those pesky young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. <laughs> spectacles? Dark glasses to you. One of the lenses was green, but the other was broken. Newfangled rubbish. That's why I remember him be so well. He did have some kind of lens over his left eye, but I wouldn't have called it a pair of glasses. Hmm, he seems to have been wearing some rather modern-looking shades. Perhaps I should take, uh, take wearing... Take to wearing some, and rival Mr. Godot's sharp appearance. Ah, we'd better come up with something sharp and quick. Guess I'll wait and see if I should challenge him about the spectacles. A newspaper in his right hand. Is there anything that would matter about that to us? In his right hand. We'll press on everything, and then we'll look over if we need to present anything. The newspaper was a sports paper, was it? That young hooligan! I nearly asked him, can't you even read without fidgeting, hmm? How was I supposed to be able to read that book back page with all that rustling going on? I needed to find out if Gustin Broad retained his championship title! It was his paper, not yours. If you wanted to know so bad, why didn't you buy your own? What are you looking at me like that for, hmm? How dare you! Ow! Ow! Gustin Braun got beaten yesterday, by the way. Anyway, ha! <laughs> Was listening to the wireless. The wireless? The decadent young rascal. In my day, it was one or the other. Read the newspaper or listen to the wireless. Oh, boy. And using an earpiece, it's selfish, that's what it is. I was straining my ears, but I couldn't catch any of it. Was he that desperate to listen to the radio? What are you looking at me that for? How dare you feel sorry for me? Ow! Ow! Then the serving girl in question brought over the Javakino. You mean the waitress who you only saw from behind, right? You're one of those, are you? You never let anything go, isn't that right? Maybe. What does it matter if I saw from behind? <laughs> My eyes don't lie! <laughs> I better not push until I've got some hard evidence. The little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. His left hand. We'll have to really look, because the hands seem important. His free hand. Yes. Which hand was that? Weren't you listening before, Cloth Ears? I said he was wrestling the newspaper with his right hand, didn't I? If his free hand wasn't his right hand, then which hand was it, you moron? <laughs> ha. Perhaps the great Mr. Trite has three hands. Yeesh, it was only asking. No need to gang up on me and treat me like a freak. The whole point of this cross-examination is to establish just one thing. God, he looks angry. This old guy's memory has more holes than a slice of Swiss. I guess we just need to find a contradiction in his testimony somewhere, huh? Anything will do. Even the smallest detail, we just need one mistake and he's ours. Let's see. Newspaper in his right hand. So obviously, with his free hand. So let's see. What do we have? Because there's the newspaper, but there doesn't really seem to be anything that would matter all that much. Jostling it with his right hand. And what other things? What other things do we have? We have the prescription bottle. We have the potassium cyanide. Let's see. If anything, it looks more like he would have been drinking with his right hand, right? In fact, let's take a look at the... Because there is a little stain on the rim as if he was drinking it with his right hand, not his left hand. 
So I'm going to say we need to present this. Because he's saying that he was jostling the paper with his right hand. Hmm. So yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. The entire thing was spectacles, listening to the radio, earpiece, jostling. And, and they specifically note his hands three times. With one extra, with the extra third one, if you press. So yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, coffee cup. <laughs> Mr. Kudo, do you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a way of testing the credibility of your memory. I know, I know. There's nothing wrong with my memory. I tell you nothing. If I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song. Care to tell us where this is going, Trite? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand while drinking the coffee with his free hand, which would make this his left. Ka, what is it? Kindergarten! But I would like the court to please take a look at this. That's the cup the victim used, correct? Yes, and on the rim you'll notice the mark left by the victim's lip. Yes, there is a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is waiting for your epic performance. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song. Ah! Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to the park where he... Wait! If you think I'm going to stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad, you're wrong! I don't care about that dirty coffee cup. I know what I saw! You, you still insist on your testimony. That young brat was holding the cup in his left hand! Oh, yes, no question. I'm a good law-abiding citizen, I am! It's that dead young hot bot, you and you, you spiky-haired yahoo, who are at fault! Who, me? Thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man! Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say! I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but... Sure, why not hear a little more? But Mr. Godot! But this is my 16th cup of coffee. So this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. You can rely on Victor! Left hand or right hand? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. We know that the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It wasn't a monocle, Your Honor. It was a small computer monitor often used by programmers. A monitor? You mean like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called an HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. HD, TV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled letters drive me mad, but they don't matter. I know what I saw and I'm telling the truth! It's true, he doesn't seem to be lying. And those are the facts, I'm good in good old black and white. But this is odd. He was claiming... Don't tell me that this guy... Hmm, but no. Because he's using his right hand jostle with the paper and he was using his left hand to mess with his like scouter and then he used that to drink on the same was wearing the earpiece on the same side of his specs so the victim was wearing an HMD HGTV CD what does it matter well, some of the none of them actually but anyway and you're sure that he was wearing the earpiece on the same side no question. I could only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. Yeah, that's pretty obvious if you look at the floor plans. 
From the opposite table, he'd only have a view of the the side of the victim's head. Huh. It seems like you kept an eye on Mr. Glen Elg. He was getting on my nerves, wrestling with the paper and fiddling with his earpiece all the time. And then he went and made up all the fuss dying from one sip of Javakino. I wanted to say to him, calm down, you young brat. Just looking at him made me suddenly speed up my seed eating. I could have choked. So I take it the victim was a walking ball of nervous energy. He was fiddling with it just before he drank. The earpiece you mentioned. Which hand did the victim touch it with? You're one of those people, aren't you? You're the type that uses your left hand to get things out of your pocket. Or fastens your left cuff with your right hand. How are you going to fashion the cuff with your no with the same hand? Are you mad? And when the tour guide says, on your right, you'll see the famous blah, blah, blah. You're the only one who deliberately looks left well, aren't you? No, I didn't mean... Obviously, use the hand on the same side of his body that the earpiece is on. Ow! ow. So, if he had the HMD on his left side, then I guess it was his left hand. But one thing that I wanted to point out when he was, like, talking about, like, fiddling with it, a part of me wondered if maybe Glenn was actually applying his medicine to his right ear. But he specifically says that he was seeing the side of his head the entire time. Because let's take a look at it. On the right side. Well, his left... Uh, his... Yeah. Left eardrum was ruptured. Wait. I've got everything backwards. I thought it was his right. Left eardrum was ruptured. Hmm. Just trying to think. That has to be important, right? That has to be important. Let's go over his testimony again. Wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens. If we take a look at his thing, he's not wearing an earpiece here. And plus, again... His left eardrum was ruptured. So... He wouldn't have had... If your left eardrum was ruptured, you wouldn't... Like, unless it was a... Like, a hearing aid, you wouldn't have something in your ear that was just ruptured, especially if you got a prescription ointment to put in that ear. So maybe... He was fiddling with it before he picked up the cup. Wearing an earpiece. I think that I should present the medicine bag because one, he could have been applying the ointment. Two, I think it's weird that he is specifically saying earpiece. He could be mistaking the scouter for an earpiece, but he wasn't, like, again... If he was wearing an earpiece, it would be on his right side. His good ear. Bam! I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Kudo, there's something very strange about your observations of the victim. What? You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear without a doubt. I could only see the uh, that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. W what do you say? You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudo, but the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Huh? Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. That's right, it's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear, because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Is that true, Captain? It is. P -p pigeon <laughs> Pretty pigeon <laughs> He's doing the pigeon song because he admitted he's wrong. Order, order, order 
This witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind, and he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when, he know, when we know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Godot, uh, a single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man is my drop of milk. Captain, are you calling me a drip? This is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim clearly shows that the victim picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down. I know I'm right. The lad drank his javakino with his left hand. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand and then switched to his left. Except the goddamn witness said that he only took one sip. That's what the old man saw. Impossible. The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Which hand the victim used to pick up his cup is irrelevant, Your Honor. The facts still stand. With one hand or the other, Mr. Elk drank the poison coffee. Like this! Sadly, Mr. Godot, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether the witness's memory is credible. And the results are clear. The testimony given by this witness is useless! I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court, but to be frank, his testimony is a farce. Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you puppet old fogey! I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo. You can't reach me from there. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm ordering the defense and prosecution to investigate this case further. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. Hold it. Wait! If we stop now, where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo? Thanks to that blue-suited young upstart over there, I'm just a bubbling old man who can't even dot his T's across his eyes now. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I can do. I've kept my mouth shut until now. But there's something else the court should know. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. But I want another chance! I want another crack at you, young shark! But me? He's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, what do you say to one final showdown? The final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook! Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. What do you have to got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the Chavacuno you want if you come to my house after the trial. I may be 68 years old, but Vitacudo is still a man! That's enough, witness. I believe it'll be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet. Much, much quicker. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> you better get ready, youngster. I get the picture. Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? He's got to be using some sort of infinite ammo code. What is that box of seeds? Then again... How big of a coffee maker does Godot have to make 17 cups of coffee in a trial? First of all, I want to stress that this might be nothing. I'm not too sure myself. The young boy slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of Javakino. Well, the clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. It broke and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. Hey, you're doubting me again? You're doubting a poor defenseless old man? No, we're not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. That seems very specific. Very specific. Don't you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah. So what, probably? That's all I can... Could this be some kind of scam or something?
Uh, I'll get I'll get back to that thought. That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. You have bad brain, that's why! That's all you can think of! Very well, Mr. Wright, your final cross-examination, please. Because the one thing that interests me is that he even mentioned the vase the vase broke. Then the clumsy idiot knocked the vase knocked it right over. Broke the vase and knocked it over. <coughs> and completely soaked. Don't we have a crime scene photo? Crime scene photo. And it's right there. What the fuck? Why would he say that it broke? Because everything seems to point to maybe this guy was a... I'm just trying to think. Because it's obviously not broken this, and the body is still there. But this guy is so adamantly sure that somebody... My brain, because obviously this is, I am not, I am certain that this is the thing that we need to present, but I'm just trying to think what the fuck does it mean? Because the old man is adamantly sure that the guy was wearing an earpiece. He was fiddling with his other hand and the paper and everything. He took a single sip and fell, breaking the vase and soaking the table. So I'm wondering if, for some reason, could it have... Old man, when did you see this all happen? I think that's important now. When did the old man see this all go down? Because it is my thought that maybe... And again... This also kind of jumped out to me, but what if that's what, like, the 500,000 and the 100,000 is about, maybe? Maybe, I don't know. But the one thing that is definite is that this old man is 100% certain that a guy had an earpiece and the, and the HMD. He's fiddled with the paper with his right hand and drank with his left hand. Took one sip, fell, broke the, the vase. So I'm wondering... And again, that's also with my theory that he only saw the waitress from the back. So what if it was the... Like, the lady with the, like, head wrapping that we saw at the restaurant once. So I'm wondering if either before or after, that's it. Cause Maggie passed out. So I'm betting that the murder happened. Maggie saw the guy sprinkle powder into the guy's coffee. Glenn drank the coffee, died. It was either or. Because, again, we have two situations that happened. One in which the head wrap woman presumably posed as Maggie. But, obviously, the actual death had to happen second. The actual death had to happen second, but why? Why? So, that would mean that Glenn Elg's death was planned, but, and it couldn't have been about the lottery ticket. The lottery ticket is irrelevant. It's all about MC Bomber and what was ever it was on that disc. Hmm. Because, again, there was an, because, again... I forget when exactly the old guy actually went and called. It was either 225 or 245. And the death happened between 130 and 230. 
So... The real death had to happen second. Either that, or they posed things? Hmm. Well, I'm sure that my, my wishy-washy theorizing is all over the place. I think that there was a fake murder in which somebody posed as Glen Elg with a earpiece and did things with their right hand and drank with their left hand, took one sip, fell, broke the thing, and the head wrap woman we saw only once in the previous investigation posed as Maggie. But it, all, but it makes more sense if the fake murder happens second. But I don't know. We'll present the crime scene photo. Bet. Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. <laughs> so what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there, intact. Huh? Lost your tongue, Granddad? I'm no granddad of yours, Hopscotch! Ow! Ow! Enough! If you throw any more seeds in this courtroom, the cleaners will be here all night. Ah! What is it now? I just remembered something. Yes, go on. The broken vase. <laughs> it was on my table. Ah, uh, well, there goes my theory. Ah, uh, my entire theory of there being a setup murder and a real murder. What? Ah, uh, well, you see. It startled me when the young lad collapsed. So I stood up. That must have been when it fell over. The vase on my table, I mean. The vase on your table? <laughs> yes, he was on my table. And that's how the like, groin came to be completely soaked. <laughs> TMI, old man. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Uh, I'd like to ask a question now. Have I, uh, have I been any use at all? Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Ah, wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh, yes, I remember something else. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. Wait, listen to me. He's going to come back, isn't he? Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked. And I'm still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony we have heard thus far. The mark on the coffee cup and the victim supposedly drank from with his left hand. And the earpiece, which was inserted into his left ear out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, Nick, you did it. I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. There's one more thing before I call today's session to an end. One more thing, Your Honor. The witness we just heard from. He is most insistent that his testimony should be of use. So he summarized it accordingly into this statement. Um, okay. You may each have a copy of it if you wish. Whatever. The prosecution doesn't need props like that. Gido's really mad, huh? Yeah, I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. They are three copies, my own, yours, and Gido's. Yes, Your Honor. When the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. I'm sorry. So that's going to have to be important. But if there was that, more than likely... We're going to have to cross-examine uh, Jean. And he'll say that he didn't hear anything, and they'll be like, well, where the fuck did you win the hit? Well, you did not hear that, you little bitch. So yeah, we're going to have to figure things out. I'm sorry? This isn't even a piece of testimony. Like a five-year-old's apology. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. Very interesting. I, don't, I feel like we learned n nothing. Because I was just theory crafting off like, oh, if the if the vase broke, then maybe that means, oh, if the vase broke, maybe that means that 
Yeah, there's like uh, two murders. One was fake and planned, and then the other, and then it just turned out that the old guy thought that the vase broke on another table when it was his. So how do you think the trial went this morning? How do you think it went? It got a bit crazy in there. I just, just wonder if that killed our chances. Yeah, I guess it did get out of hand. Mr. Kudo's testimony did nothing to help us. Plus, now we don't even know the identity of the waitress who laced the coffee. All we know is that old Mr. Kudo saw the apron straps and the ribbon. And that the victim was wearing an earpiece when his eardrum was ruptured. Talk about a terrifying case of contradictions. Time to play doctor and find ourselves a cure then, huh? Yeah, we've got to find one for Maggie or she's going to have a terminal case of guilty. I like these characters. These characters are just so nice. Well, I guess first things first, we should probably go to the detention center. Nope. I guess Maggie's still in questioning. But, but we've got questions to ask her, too. Maggie! Maggie! Keep it down, Maya! This isn't a playground, you know? You'd think that she would have learned that by now. Looks like Gumshoe's not here. Never mind that. What's going on? It feels different in her somehow. You think? Yeah, everyone seems to be on edge. What are you doing? Call the, uh, and the officers for the briefing, quick! Can't you shut down the station server? Chief, quit playing on the internet! But my email, pin pal! Leet? One, because uh, I assume that's Leet and Princess. Is that the frickin', like, director guy from Silver Samurai? Save it for later, I'm turning it off now! No! Litan's a princess! Everyone's keeping busy in here, huh? Keeping busy? More like panicking, if you ask me. Something's going on. Something big. That is weird. Well, then we have to come here so that we can then go to Tresbien. Empty as usual. Yeah, and it's lunchtime, too. That's it! Come on, come on, come on! Hey, that sounds like... Oh, now just call a Nate, pal. Come on, I know you can. He's getting really worked up about something. No, that's the wrong number. Ah, looks like a Nate would have only netted me five bucks anyway. What a ripoff. What's the problem, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, it's you. I, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> I was just, <laughs> I was just listening to the radio, pal. To the radio. Hey, Detective Gumshoe's having lunch here. He is, and he's having a 20 set. Uh, uh, what can I say? What can you say? This is a nightmare! How am I supposed to look Maggie in the eye now, pal? You really drove her into a corner, you know. You always blow apart my testimony! Why of all days didn't you do it today? Sorry, there just weren't any holes in it, for once. Yeah, what happened? Usually your testimonies are like Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese? What if he preferred crumbly, crumbled like aged parmesan? Anyway, this case has already been ruled on. There shouldn't be any holes left to find. So, did Maggie say anything to you? About me, I mean. Well, um, how did she put it again? I can't believe Detective Gumshoe! I hate him, sir! I mean it! I don't ever want to see him again! Something like that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Please, Detective Gumshoe, I didn't mean... Why? Why is this happening? He's banging his head against the wall, Nick. Oh, man. Poor gumshoe. So, did you like the 20 sets? I've never paid that much money for lunch before. I was so nervous my hands were shaking. So, how did it taste? Well, for 20 bucks, I guess... I don't know how to describe it, really. It was delicate. Delicate? You mean you liked it? It didn't taste bad to you? What's the matter with him? Looks like he's thinking. That's it! I've been trying to think of the right word to describe the taste. And I just realized, it's bad! That's what it tasted like, bad! Uh, it's just kind of hard to admit it to yourself when you pay 20 bucks for it, you know? Maybe you should have found out about the price after he had finished eating. 
Hey Nick, maybe that's why Glen Elk came here. Maybe he heard about this super fierce twenty set. If by fierce you mean fearsome, speaking of Glen Elk, that reminds me. We still hardly know anything about the guy. Why don't we ask Detective Gumshoe what he knows, seeing as he's here? I swear, sometimes Maya can read Phoenix's mind. That would be hilarious if just like all this time Phoenix is thinking it, Maya hears it, and it's just like, oh, I guess that he's still talking. And Phoenix just thinks nothing of it. So what were you all excited about earlier? Huh? That's right, you said you were listening to the radio or something. Oh, that? That was nothing. I was excited. Come on, Detective Gumshoe, you can tell little old me. What were you listening to? Nothing, really. It was just the, um, daily exercise show. Really? What the? A psych lock? <laughs> this lunch special's up to sure is great. Now that's when a psych lock should have popped up. Then why are your tears in your eyes? Interesting. Well, let's see if we can ask more about Glenn. <laughs> this guy was a real programming genius. They called him the walking computer at the place where he worked. What happens when he crashes, though? Does he just stop moving all of a sudden? Uh, he wasn't literally a computer, Maya. Anyway, there's nothing between Maggie and the victim. Yeah, and that's what we found out yesterday, too. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, don't you have any information that's a bit more fun? Fun? I, uh... Oh, I know. So, have you paid the visit to where Mr. Elk worked yet? You might as well. His workplace? Where's that? A computer firm called Blue Screens, Inc. Or something like that. Sounds like a real stable company. This could be fun, Nick. Let's go. Computers aren't really my thing, Maya. We'll be fine. I know all about this high-tech stuff. I wonder about that. Oh, it's just around the corner from this joint. You should take a look. A computer firm called Blue Screens, Inc., huh? We're gonna quickly save and then... At least activate the Magatama. I doubt that we have evidence for it, but... The most that I can think about is... Maybe the lottery ticket, because... He thinks maybe another one will come out. It is only a one lock. Alright, Detective Gumshoe, tell me the truth. What were you listening to? No way, pal. Now that you've made a big thing out of it, I'm not gonna tell you. We'll see about that, pal. Considering all the noise you were making while you were listening, it's pretty clear what kind of radio program it was. I'd say it was related to... The lottery ticket. I'm right, aren't I? You were listening to the lottery results, weren't you? You thought you'd try to win big, just like Glen Elg did. It's... It's like you could see right through me! Huh? I've cracked him already? See, pal, that's why I said it, it was nothing. That's hilarious. Easiest unlock ever. I'm usually pretty lucky, so I figured I'd give it a try. What's with everyone in the lottery? So, how'd it go? I won 50 cents. It'd be better to win nothing at all than half a lousy buck. I was so mad. I know the feeling. I bought the same kind of ticket Mr. Elg, see? And they've got this special radio show where they announce the winning numbers. They even do the drawings live on the air. It's intense, pal. I bet that's what Mr. Elg was listening to on the day he was killed. Yeah. What time is it now? Oh, uh, it's just after 1.30. So Elg had to have died at 1.30. And are the lottery results always broadcast at the same time? Yeah, look, I got this flyer when I bought the ticket. So that narrows down his time of death. Then what the hell was the old man doing before he got to a payphone? What the hell was the restaurant owner doing not doing anything about it? Is my... Is my... Huh. We'll have to come back to this. Millionaire Radio? That sounds really cool. I want to try it, Nick. Then buy a ticket, Maya. With your own money. Well, let's go to Vitamin Square first. Oh, no. <laughs> Fake dude's back. Hmm. I don't see any sign of Mr. Kudo, do you? Maybe he went to buy another ton of bird seed. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't be here anyway, at least not for now. 
Besides, any more seats today and I'm liable to turn into a real phoenix. Hey, look. It's the thing. Hey, check this out! I wouldn't get too close to that if I were you. Or otherwise, you might be in for a shock. My phony must be lurking someplace nearby. Just imagine a tiger loose in the city. Meanwhile, the real phoenix is like an abandoned chick lost in a vast urban jungle. Huh? Don't worry, someday you'll grow up and become a ferocious tiger too. Don't lose hope. Why is she trying to pep talk me into becoming my phony? That's hilarious. I used to love some boxes. We'd not be finding iron filings. Yeah, we've already heard that. I don't think there's anything. <laughs> Still find it funny. Do you want the iron filings? No. Well, I don't think there's anything else to see. We can't check out the other thing. Oh, we can go to the kitchen! Huh? Mr. Armstrong's talking to someone. It's the brain-damaged woman! I'll be back next month. We're in that treatment. I'll be waiting for you! If you haven't got it by then, I'm afraid it might get a little hot around here. None! I will have everything ready, I promise! I love fire, you know. I love the way it crackles. <laughs> no, no, no! Stop it, I beg you! He keeps playing that noise, going higher and higher. Then don't let me down. I'll be watching you. Mignon, this is not necessary. You can trust me, mademoiselle. Talk to anyone, and I'll drive a knife right through your heart. Oh, none! You don't have to worry. You know you very much worry too much. Maybe this will help you relax. It is the oil of sandalwood. I do love raw meat from time to time. She's just freaking insane. Ah! Then again, this is Phoenix Wright. Everyone's insane. I'll be taking my leave. Goodbye for now. Oh, early how she was. I must rub some of my oil all over my body before I become a nervous wreck. There, oh, oui, oui, that feels good. Stop. Oh, oh la la, excuse me, monsieur. My eyes! My eyes! Your eyes? If you have trouble with your eyes, you need this la oil of sandalwood. Isn't that just leftovers of what you were just using? You don't exactly have many customers, do you, Mr. Armstrong? None, you are right, Monsieur. But perhaps that is the perfect time for you to visit me, non? That way I can give you my undivided attention and cook for you, la dish supreme. Putting on a brave face, huh? That's what girls do, Nick. But you are right, business... <laughs> Suddenly, Armstrong just drops the accent. Yeah, but you're right, business is bad. But you are right. Business is very difficult these days. But perhaps the name is the problem. People do not understand it. They think it is Trey. I just wanted people to think that my restaurant was exclusive. But they think you just serve fast food on cheap plastic trays? Nick, that's the kind of thing that can make a girl cry. Have you forgotten that Mr. Armstrong is a man, Maya? But this restaurant is my life. It is everything to me. I defend it to the finale. No one will take it from me. So, who was that woman you were just talking to? Oh la la, you saw that? Ah, uh, well, yes, yeah, sorry. So, who was she? She looked so polite and graceful. Polite and graceful? And she likes raw meat and fires, right? We just saw this. <laughs> we just saw this. We have no need to read it again. <laughs> Maybe that's there for if you come here, see that, leave, go do other things, then come back so you have context, but still feels weird. Now I think about it. Hey, Maya, I think it's pretty clear what kind of conversation they were having. You think so? Well, then let's show them that piece of evidence and see what happens. Let me guess, this was about, uh, your loan contract. So long as that paper exists, I am but a delightful angel with the broken wings. An angel, huh? Doesn't bode well when you think about it. 
ways they kept harassing me month after month. In the end, I had to give in. I agreed to help them. Help them? With what? Must be in the earth. I did not owe them a lot of money. I would have refused. But my hands were tied. Please, what did you agree to help them with? None. I cannot say. And I tell you that woman, she was slice me up. And it to me with a salad garnish. Ew, I hope he doesn't mean that he'll literally be sliced up and served with garnish. I'm going to guess that woman has something to do with your loan contract, am I right? Ah! Please, Mr. Armstrong, tell us about that woman. The woman who was here earlier. I take it that she's, um... Why has it come to this? What a tragedy. Suddenly I find myself so deep in debt. it is a sign of the bad, bad world we live in, huh? No, I'd say it's more of a sign of the bad, bad culinary skills. The woman was here, the scary woman. She is from the loan agency. Loan office? Is that where you borrowed half a million dollars from? We oui, tender lender, it is called. Catchy name, just hearing it makes me want to borrow some money. Please, you must not borrow them. If you must, no more than ten dollars. Ten dollars? Sounds like your whole monthly stipends, Maya. Hey, I get a bit more than that, thank you very much. So Tinder Linder is the loan office you borrowed half a million from, huh? I wonder if they've got anything to do with this case. I'm a weak woman. When I'm upset, I have to buy something nice to cheer me up. Thanks to him loaning me la her money, I have to pay back half a million dollars now. I'm like a slave. I have to do everything that he tells me. Um, who's this he? The tiger. The tiger? We oui, is the manager, the tender lender, terrifying man, the big city mobster. When he shouts at me, my knees are trembling, and his voice is ringing in my ears for three days. As soon as I hear the noise of that battered old scooter he rides, I start to cry. A big city mobster who rides a battered old scooter? Does this guy resemble me by any chance? Oh, no, 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 this man is a presence, a most formidable personality. Although, well, he does have the spiky hair, just like you. Well, there's a resemblance there, I suppose. Hmm, sounds like this loan office is worth checking out after all. If you want to visit the tender lender, it's just beyond Vatiman Square. Hey, Nick? If you need money, I can loan you some, as long as it's less than three dollars. Thanks for the offer. Just be on Vitamin Square, huh? So I knew she had to be involved. Well, I gotta head back to the... That's not his voice at all. Well, I gotta head back to the precinct now. We've got a big meeting starting in a bit. About Maggie's case, you mean? No, that's pretty much wrapped up now. There's another big case going down at the moment, so she's been pushed aside. Okay, well, see you later then. <laughs> Bye! And then he comes back. You better get going, detective, or you'll be late. Actually, I, um... I've kind of got a favor to ask. It's a big one. A favor? Yeah, it's for, um... Maggie, actually. I was kind of hoping you'd give this to her for me. What is it? It's a lunchbox. I got up early so I could make it. I've been real worried about her. She looked like she'd lose, lost a lot of weight. Detective Gumshoe. How many weenies are in here? There's not a person on earth who could down this much meat. You think? I love weenies. I can't get enough of that tender juiciness. So wait, give it to her. I took it mages to make it, so please say you will, pal. Can't exactly say no, can I? A, fi a tenderly handmade lunchbox fills, fills the stomach with love and plenty of weenies. Maybe I'll eat it myself if I get hungry. Don't forget, okay? I'm counting on you to give that to Maggie. He's finally gone. Well, I guess we can go to blue screens. Wow, this place is so high-tech. You can almost smell the electricity in the air. It is a computer firm, Maya. They can't work without electricity, you know. Who are you? 
That is not your voice. Oh, uh, um, hello. I'm sorry. Access is restricted to the authorized personnel only. This is a computer programming laboratory. There are far too many trade secrets that could be leaked. Wow, what secrets? Everything you see here is classified. No information can leave this building. Understood. Who is this woman? She's like a robot of some kind of whacked educational show. My name is Lisa Basil. Ah, another palindrome in a way. Lisa Basil, yeah. Is everybody who works here gonna be a palindrome? I'm the company director. D director? She's human? She seems more like a ghost in a shell. Haha, <laughs> reference. And the thing over her eye. Is that the same device as Glen Elg's? That's a DMH, right? Nice try, but it's the other way around, Maya. It's an HMD. All of my programmers here at Blue Screens Inc. are supplied with HMDs. And you write programs too? No, I just enjoy wearing this. They are pretty cool. I wouldn't mind one. So, what exactly is this firm's business? I will try to simplify it so that you can understand. We analyze the data management systems required by certain branches of industry, and then deliver optimum, uh, optimum operating systems and source level components to them. Huh? You lost me on corner of analyze and management. It doesn't matter, they analyze stuff. You got that much right. The software we produce is distributed on CDs. CDs? Yes, compact disc, digital optical storage media. Of course, CDs are used for software as well as music. It is a small firm, but all my employees are first-class programmers. Let's ask one, of th well, ask one of them what they are doing. He doesn't look healthy. Excuse me, what are you working on right now? I'm researching the impact of time-slicing common areas on logical access to shared global variables. Obviously, program structures influences response time and performance, so the codependence of variables and memory overheads is vitally important to the success of the execution. Well, you get the idea. That is the sort of thing we are involved in. Do you have, uh, did you good people follow all that? Yeah. Your blank smile just said otherwise, Maya. You know about what happened, right, Miss Basil? You mean Glenn being pr poisoned? Yes, I know. It's terrible. Can you tell us anything that might be helpful? I don't think so. A police officer was here earlier, too. But I couldn't tell him anything either because... The waitress who committed the crime has nothing to do with Blue Screens, Inc. Oh... How about Mr. Elg's desk? Have you cleared it out already? No, not yet. It's the one right in front of you. If there's anything that might be useful to you, you are welcome to take it. I guess there might be a clue here somewhere. I guess we'll quickly present... Glenn's diddly D. Um, about Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. But he did suffer from one, t uh, one or two bugs in his personality. Oh, like what? He was a bit of a loser. Perhaps that would be the best way to describe it. That's what got him into trouble. What's the matter? He was a top programmer. I would even say he was a genius. So he was really no trouble at all. A model employee. Hey, wait a minute! Just now you said something about him being in trouble. We've got to find out exactly what this trouble was. Um, about Mr. Elg. Was he in some kind of trouble? I'm sorry, why would you think that? I think you said something about it just now. You said you got, he got himself into some trouble because he was a bit of a loser. And there's more of them. Three? Three Cyclops? I guess Mr. Elk is like every other man with his own pile of secrets. Well, look at this desk, Nick. What a mess. Looks pretty average to me. But you can't get any work done with everything all over the place like this. You think? Real whiz kids can work under any condition, you know? She's trying to hint that I should tidy my desk more. I'll clean up my desk when Maya stops asking silly questions. No hurry, then. Hey! This calendar. What about it? If this is another hint about tidying, you can forget it. Someone's marked December 3rd in red pen. December 3rd? That's the day Mr. Elk was murdered! Is there anything else? Yeah, um, it says meet with the tiger. The t tiger Wow, look at this mess. Looks like they're all betting tickets. What kind of betting tickets? For betting on which horse will win a given race. They're horse racing tickets. Wow, these drawers are stuffed full of them. 
Looks like they're all losing tickets, though. There's over five fucking hundred of them. This many tickets would get you, what, a buck down at the recycling center? But I didn't know you were so hard up that you tried to profit from the dead, Nick. I'm just taking them as evidence, Maya. Hmm. I'm going to guess that those two are at least some of the evidence we need to prod out your Cyclops. We're going to be nearing the time where I should stop before it gets too late or I get too sucked in. So we're going to quickly see if we can head to... Well, first things first, let's see. Nope, nothing new about that. Then let's go to Tinder Linder. Win through compromise. Weird. Hey, there's probably his fake Phoenix Wright suit. This place gives off a really strange vibe, doesn't it? Looks like the tiger isn't in his lair. And that is, as they say, a very good thing. Welcome. Oh, talk about a creepy voice. It makes your soul want to shrivel up and die. You're here to discuss alone? Uh, no, not exactly. The manager is away at the moment. Wait quietly, please. I forget what voice I gave her. She's gone, just like that. I guess we'll just have to come back another time. But this is the perfect opportunity, Nick. This place reeks of suspicion. Come on, Nick, let's take a look around. Do you think it'd be okay? Of course, no one will ever... Coffee? Ah! I'll leave it here for you to enjoy quietly. Yes, thank you. Do not touch the desk. Please. No, no, Nick. Let's get out of here. Now she wants to get out of here. What's this? It's a punching bag. What? No way. You wouldn't catch me walking around with a bag like that. What do you mean, walking around? The design's gross to start with, and it's way too heavy to be practical. And why is it called a punching bag? Don't people know messenger bags are in? I knew it. I was right before back at Tresby and Paris fashion is more of my thing. I really, really hope she's pulling my chain on this one. Let's see. This round doll thing is called a Daruma, Dorama, I think. I figured I'd read a book or two and be more cultured in case you're wondering. You mean you aren't making stuff up for a change? <laughs> I think you also didn't know that no matter what, he'll always... Uh, no matter what, he'll always write himself. Come on, Nick. Give him a good shove. Only if I feel like dying. Now this yellow thing, this is a Japanese chess piece, I think. It's a king? Not that I'm an expert or anything. I'm more of a reversey person, you know. Assuming she knows what she's talking about, these aren't exactly your typical mobster wannabe items. They're not trophies, are they? Hey, there's a piece of paper stuck under here. What is it? A repair bill? Looks like he did some repair work on his car. Does he even have one? 15000 to replace a bumper and a light? That's insane! The car's registered, too. The cadaver... What? So that's not even the tiger's car? Why would someone else's repair bill be in the tiger's office? To the cadaverini family. Why anybody would be named after a cadaver... Hey, look, this is a Parisian-styled coat. It's so chic. Looks more like a pimp coat to me, because I haven't got an eye for fashion. Hey, look at this. The suit is the same color as the one you wear, Nick. Hmm, the same color as my suit. Ah! Keep your voice down, Maya. Nick, you've got to take a look. Some cake. Ah! I'll just leave it here for you. Yeah, sure, I am, thanks. Just wait here quietly, otherwise. Sure. Did you hear that, Nick? Wait quietly, she said. Yeah, sure. I have my eye on you. Only so I can take care of you. Understand? Ah, uh, I'm scared, Nick. So? What are you getting so excited about before? Look on the lapel of this suit. That's... That's an attorney's badge. Is a tiger a lawyer? No way, look at this thing, it's made of paper! For some reason, your badge suddenly looks really cheap to me, Nick. Why doesn't anyone recognize an obviously fake badge when they see one? That's one impressive desk on the... 
I think I completely misread that. It's solid gold, Nick. Gold! Just look at the shine. Only real gold shines like that. Would you really want a such a shiny desk, though? I don't know, but let's see what it's like to sit at a solid gold desk. Wow, I'm completely dazzled. That's because it's completely dazzling. I can see up my nose in the reflection. That's got to be really distracting. So the desk is impractical. No surprise there. There's a CD player on the desk, but the desk is so loud, it's a wonder you can hear it. The lid's open. I wonder what kind of music the tiger's into. Have you finished the coffee? Ah! Yes, thanks! It was lovely! So, you drank it all? Hee hee hee. If you touch anything else that doesn't belong to you, there's always another cup. That coffee! It was a list of something, I'm almost sure of it! Nick, my stomach! It's killing me! Oh wait, maybe it was just a burger I ate for breakfast. I sure hope so. We better take a look at that CD while we're still alive and have the chance. What the? What? It's not the Rocco sand sound. Uh, it's not the Rocco soundtrack, is it? Claw of the Tiger. I know that reference. It's it's a demo CD. The artist's name has been handwritten on the disc and pen. MC Bomber. What? This must be the CD Maggie told us about. Let's listen to it. I bet it's heavy metal. No way. That woman will make us drink more coffee if we do. Let's get out of there. There he is. Old CD is back feeding the pigeons again. There, take this and this and get out of my park. Like I thought, he was really mad. Come on, Maya, just keep her head down and let's sneak away while we still can. What? Why? Hello, old man. What are you doing, Maya? Huh? Cat. Hey, he just turned his back on us. I'm not surprised. I bet I really hurt his pride in the court mo this morning. Hey, Mr. Kudo. <laughs> P -p Pigeon. Ka. Look, we really need to talk to you, all right? Out with the demons! I In with good fortune! Ow! Ow! Seeds! Shell splinters! Painful! I always knew you were a demon, Maya. Harsh. Well, we... Definitely opened up more avenues. We got a bunch of evidence. We'll probably be able to go and break open the psych locks for the basil lady next. And we just have a lot to do. We have to talk to this guy some. Then we have to go talk to Maggie, break the psych locks on basil. Maybe meet with, what's his name, the tiger. But I do think that we shall end things here for now because I think that was a intensive thing so we got through the that was an intensive meeting with the creepy lady at the loan agency who just threatened to murder Jean and we got through a decent trial segment crushing this poor old man's hopes and dreams this way we won't go too long because we did a decent amount. We gathered a decent amount of evidence and opened up new areas, more things to find out. So, hmm. The MC Bomber disc is obviously important, and it's probably software rather than music. And more than likely... M he was he figured that MC Bomber was worth half a million dollars, whatever that kind of program is. So he was probably trying to sell it to La Tiger when he won the lottery. He won half a million dollars in the lottery and was prop Okay. He was probably in debt to Tiger because of all the gambling he did. He had an issue with gambling, horse races, and would always lose. He got into a fight yesterday, like the previous day before his murder, and went and got a prescription. He was low on money, but he went to 
Trey Bien, probably because the tiger is dumb and figured, oh, this place is expensive, therefore it is chic and I should go there. So he ordered to meet Glenn at Trey Bien so that he... And plus he also has Trey Bien in his pocket so he could conduct business there. And more than likely, Glenn stole program software called MC Bomber and estimated it to be worth half a million dollars. And it's also, but it also is important that he also noted a hundred thousand dollars. So it's possible that he initially only needed a hundred or a hundred thousand dollars, not a million. A hundred thousand dollars, but then maybe the the guy, the the tiger, beefed it up and said, "Oh no, you need to get me five hundred thousand. And so he was going to sell MC Bomber to the tiger to pay off his debt. But then, while he was meeting with Tiger, he won the lottery for five hundred thousand dollars. And probably outright said, ha ha, I win, you lose, I don't have to do anything, and I can be in good standing with my company again. Tiger, upset at this, poisoned him. But then there was also the other thing of the fact that this guy didn't see the waitress from the front, so it could have been the creepy lady posing as Maggie. But why would they double dose? Because... Maggie clearly remembers the tiger putting poison in the guy's cup. But this guy clearly remembers seeing the waitress put something in the cup. Who knows? Maybe it's... Maybe Godot foreshadowed it and Maggie actually did put, like, some milk or something in it. Or sprinkled some sugar in Because really, the only thing we proved was that he never saw the waitress from the front, so who knows. And we also know that Glenn had to have died around 1.30. And this guy only went to call the police at a payphone at either 2.15, like 2.25 or 2.45, something like that. Which, at this point would be way, 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 way past the death of the guy. So there's a lot going on, and we have a lot to prove. And this case is getting interesting, but it's not being weird. And so far, Jean Jean, he's the only one really being super weird to me. Being a weird, weird oil man. But yes, this case is very interesting. We'll have to see... What more happens? So there's a very interesting things going on. So we'll have to see. But, yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. One is the edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings, in which I upload edited content to, and I swear I am slowly working through my brain, to then be able to make my first edited content in a while. I have made the main difficult art asset, and now I'm just trying to get Brain to cooperate on drawing at all, so I can make simple assets to basically fit my Brain's, like, list of demands at this point. Meh. And then for the second channel, it is Neon Icy Games. So if you want to watch me play games live on YouTube, or if you want to just catch up on streams of games past, like the Mass Effect trilogy, the rest of the uh, Ace Attorney trilogy that I've played so far, various games indeed, you can go and either catch up on all those streams of the past, or watch me play games in the future. And if you prefer to watch on Twitch, so long as it continues to trug along, you can watch me on twitch.tv slash neonicywings. 
other such things. You, if you want art from me, similar to my little character in the corner, you can follow me on various social medias like Twitter. I don't care if it's called X. It is still Twitter. Hmm. Twitter, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Pillowfort, Inkblot, maybe Blue Sky. I, I, I have my invite. I just need to set up the goddamn account and upload the backlog. <laughs> And uh, all links to these, except for the blue sky, again, I'm still setting that up, can be found in my link tree, linktr.ee slash neon icy wings. Other such things in my link tree are my archive of our own. So if you want to read the various fictions that I write, you can do that. And if you want, you can go also and find my Patreon there and throw me a dollary do as something to help me survive the evils of the world. Because, oh, the world is an evil place. <laughs> but yes, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>